There we go. All right, welcome to the November 18th technical steering committee call. Um, uh, just to start with, obviously, the antitrust policy notice that everybody on this call has seen many, many times since we don't have any guests. Um, just know that you should comply with that, as well as the code of conduct that is linked to from the agenda. So get started with the announcements. Uh, as always, the Dev Weekly newsletter goes out each Friday. So if you have anything that you'd like to add to that, uh, please consider doing that today and um, get it into the, the next Dev Weekly newsletter. Also, as a reminder, uh, we won't be meeting next week due to uh, the US Thanksgiving holidays. So we've canceled next week's meeting. And then, uh, yeah, anybody else have any announcements that they would like to make? Resounding silence says that nobody else has any announcements they'd like to make. All right, so we do have uh, the three reports that have been on the agenda for a few weeks now. Um, I haven't seen anything new added to any of those reports other than uh, maybe just some discussions um, that have been kind of back and forth with the with the submitters. Um, so I don't think there's any outstanding questions, but I do want to give people the opportunity that if there is any outstanding questions that they'd like to ask, they bring it up now. All right, again, resounding silence says that everybody's happy. We'll let those three fall off. Um, next week, we will, uh, Dano has uh, reached out already to Silas on the, the borough report. So we will hopefully expect to see that soon. Uh, we do have uh, expected in the next meeting that we have, we'll, we should have hopefully four new reports from Grid, Transact, Cello, and Quilt coming up. Um, so let's move on to the discussion. So the first item that I have on the list here is the, the security process proposal that Rye has put out. Um, there has been uh, some discussion on that, but uh, I'd like to open the, the floor to, to have further discussion on this particular proposal. Oh no. Yes, thank you. So, I mean, admittedly, I should have started this before I put a comment earlier today, but given the time, difference you know i don't think anybody really had much chance to look at it but uh, i mean essentially i on the proposal itself i think this is going in the right direction uh, the question I had, had more to do with the current documentation we have so right if you scroll down i put a link well you can I've, you kind of have it there too but uh, in particular you know so we have it, and from that point of view, I think, you know, we, we can give ourselves some kudos on the fact that it's not like we've never done anything in this regard. And so we actually have documentations with, you know, with regard to what, how we handle security issues and, and even a fairly detailed process on how to respond, respond to, to vulnerability reports. But so the proposal doesn't say anything about, you know, um, the current documentations. Basically, the main change seems to be, A, we update the security MD file in all the repositories. And um, I think we also need to uh, have a look at the defect response page. So I didn't do a thorough review of it, but I looked at it to a certain degree. And uh, there are certain things that I noticed that, you know, where there's like a discrepancy differences between what's being recommended now and what we have. And just to name a few that I spotted going through kind of side by side or after rereading the guide um, and how they suggest to do this. For instance, they say you should early on negotiate with the reporter on an embargo period because some may not want to even respect any embargo 
uh, some will be more tolerant and 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 negotiate with you, uh, agree on, you know, giving you some time to try to address the problem before they make it public. And then there are things like when we when we uh, uh, create a CVE, um, the recommendation is to offer the reporter to be named to so that they can they can be involved in the process of creating the CD and be given credit if they choose to. And so I think these are like you know small details that I've seen in passing that I think we could definitely you know get more alignment to because I think uh -oh, alignment on because I don't think that you know there is any reason not to follow the recommended way basically. So all right, thanks, Arnaud. Uh, Rai, I saw you had your hand up. Did you want to comment or? Sure, um, I did make, uh, if you look at the, the edit history of the page, I did make a couple edits uh, to remove some of the stuff that was Jira specific, uh, but I, I agree the rewriting of this page and it, it's implied, it's not stated. I think this needs to be rewritten and uh, that, that's, that's all I gotta say. All right, thanks, Rai. Uh, Dano? So to um, give some more weight to the need to rewrite some of this, um, let's say hypothetically, um, a maintainer finds a bug that was shipped and that is worthy of a CVE vulnerability. It doesn't really fit that well into this process. It's all focused on an external bug report. It doesn't answer key questions such as, who do they have a duty to disclose it to before it goes public? Um, you know, What sort of oversight if you're gonna make this would be needed or is there no oversight? if it's found within the maintainers and kept within the maintainers and fixed. Um, and I think that's actually a, uh, a weakness um, that, you know, if, if you find something that you feel is worthy of the, of the designation of a security bug, um, reading through this, you could in theory keep it entirely internal and never tell anyone to just fix it and hope it goes away. And I don't think that's a good thing. I think there should be some speaking about, you know, what, what level is relevant now, you know, flip below a certain level, yeah, it's, it's de minimis. It doesn't matter. Just, just fix it. But above a certain level, I think there needs to be some level of oversight. And what is that level? It's probably going to be a fairly high level. Um, you know, not just you know something that you know you could, with the right you know compiler options, you could break something that's you know not worth it. But if it's something that could result in chain splits, that's definitely worthy. So I think that's those are some things as we rewrite this we need to keep in mind. Yeah, makes sense, Dano. Uh, Nathan. Uh, I think that updating this is a really great idea. Um, it also helps protect the community in case uh, one of the partners in the ecosystem doesn't want something disclosed or wants to delay something being disclosed. Having a clear written policy lets us follow the policy and, and keep away from any controversy, um, especially where, you know, like the antitrust policy says, we are a collection of competitors that are doing different things. Um, I would also like to ask anyone from Fabric, has Hacker One been working out for you? I mean, uh, some of the other projects have done some Hacker One and hadn't really gotten a lot of valuable response. I mean, we got a lot of like things logged about, you know, on a public domain website, we checked your DNS settings and, you know, stuff like that. Not, we never really saw much substantive response on Hacker One. Yeah, Nathan, I had that same question on the. Hacker one, um, I think Rai had responded in the notes that um, there has been some input from Hacker one, but maybe not uh, not very detailed as far as um, what's out there. So uh, I, that was a concern that I had as well surrounding that um, proposal number two, if you will. Dave. Uh, yeah, so we've had a, probably, a, I'd say, a decent number of HackerOne reports. Most of them have been pretty minor things, like people trying to take over the Read the Docs site, things like that. Um, I, I think it's mostly people trying to cherry pick and find uh, bounties easily. Um, we haven't had anything too substantial reported. Most of them have been pretty minor things that we didn't think we needed to do CVEs for. But I think the process itself has worked out pretty well. Okay. Other other comments or thoughts on on what's been proposed by Rai?
Um, if not, I, I feel like maybe where we're at is that we might need to put together a task force for some of these items uh, for the you know, specifics around what it is that we're, we're trying to accomplish with this. Um, you know, I, I think more than anything, it boils down to what are we doing with the existing uh, hacker one? What are we doing with the existing um, kind of wiki pages that we have? Uh, what what is the the right process? And so, uh, while I think all the the proposals are um, good at a high level, I, I do think maybe it's a, a question of how do we get to the the specifics and the detail behind it. I agree. And uh, I just wanted to show this as this is a recent report from three days ago that came in to, to illustrate uh, David's point that this is this is actually a really good example of a valid report that uh, in the end has no value. I mean, it, it's valid what they're saying, but there's no change in fabric that's needed to to mitigate this. So and if, if anyone on the TSC wants to be added to the Hacker One program as an observer, I will invite you. Just let me know. All right. Do we have any volunteers then to, to run a task force on this? Hey, sure. Um, I can help you on this. Okay. Uh, anybody else interested in participating on the task force? Uh, just let Arun know, I guess, and uh, get something set up to to run through and walk through the specifics. Are there any any? kind of comments or, or thoughts that people would like to add as a task force kicks off on this? Are there any concerns with the direction that this is headed? Um, anything that you know people would like to make sure that the task force really takes a look deeper into? So I'll be happy to participate in the task force. I don't, I don't know if Pai has not said anything because he's, you know, he thinks that as a staff, he doesn't need to volunteer, but uh, I think it would be really good to have Rai on this because he has probably the most, uh, you know, background on how things have been going so far. I'll be there. I, just, I figured that was, uh, that was implied. But um, okay. uh, there's there's a, a ton that's that's not captured here. Uh, that these are issues that have been kicking around the TSC for a long time. Like we have, I think, two or three projects that have people on the security mailing list. Uh, I think that number is far too low. Right now, we have a valid, what appears to me to be a valid. Uh, report of an issue in a project from HackerOne. Uh, HackerOne only covers Fabric, but I'm not gonna just delete the, the response. I've been trying to get someone from that project to engage on HackerOne and I can't, I, I can't get any response. And then we have another issue on the same project uh, that was filed by a member of the community directly via email that I forwarded to the security list. And trying to get people to engage is like pulling teeth. I, I, pulling teeth is probably easier, honestly. So I, I, I think that is missing. Is like, what does the TSC want in terms of membership of the security, uh, the security team, and what does the TSC expect? I mean, our outline on Hacker One says we will respond within seventy-two hours or something. And I think we've missed every one of those deadlines. So, uh, Nathan. I think that all sounds like well within the remit of what needs to be addressed. I think refreshing the security mailing list membership 
is probably something we have to do much more frequently than we have. And uh, I'm not sure if there's a way we can measure some of our response times. It, it feels like we have a few different places where we tell people response times are important on responding to issues, on responding to emails and other things. Um, I'm not sure the current LF analytics lets us measure that sort of a thing, but that, that that's something that we might be able to, to um, help us know when we need to trigger, you know, adding or changing membership on some of these um, uh, committees. Arnold? Yeah, so I, I think in terms of, you know, engagement from the projects, we've got to be able to say, look, at least for projects that have graduated, you must have one of your maintainers on this list on point you know, ready to respond if this concerns your project. I mean, if we can't enforce that, we might as well go play something else. <laughs> I mean, I know the TSC doesn't have much power in practice, but this seems to be, and, and, and for those who are not quite up to date on this, and maybe I'm being more sensitive admittedly because I'm now engaged in a, in a peer project to the Hyperledger Linux Foundation called the Open SSF, which is where this guideline came from. And but the issue of you know uh, security and vulnerabilities regarding open source is becoming a major topic of discussion in the industry and around the world. Governments are taking a very serious look at this. So we've got to do our part. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, um, as Nathan mentioned, having this be a, a remit of, of the task force makes some sense, right? As far as how do we ensure that we're going to get projects involvement? How do we ensure that we're going to get the response times for these security issues? Um, I, I think all of those sorts of things fall into kind of the, the revamp of the security processes that we have in place for, for Hyperledger. All right, Ryan, I see you brought this up. Uh, this is just FYI for us as far as the all time, medium time to response, medium time to triage, that sort of thing. Right, just the, the question was like, we don't have, how do we get these statistics? We can get some of them from HackerOne, um, we could get them out of JIRA, but it's not easily available. And beyond that, I think we'd have to, we'd have to manually make some CSVs. Um, uh, this, uh, hacker one report, uh, is specific to any hyperledger project or it cover all hyperledger projects. This covers all submissions to the Hyperledger program. The only funded projects are Fabric. Uh, IBM, it's been a long time. IBM directed funds to HackerOne for this program through Hyperledger. So Hyperledger has funded this, uh, or this program. We get reports from everything. We get, we get reports for every Linux Foundation project. So- yeah, okay, like, But like suppose here a Hyperledger, so like the Hyper Fabric, Indie, Sartooth, or- it cover all the projects, right? This covers all submissions. The only ones that we pay out on are Fabric. Okay, okay, okay. And and, uh, and this is publicly available or is uh, you need some credential to view this report? For this report, uh, it's not yet publicly available. I guess I could export the PDF and make that available. Uh, I'll see what I can do in order to make this. What I don't want to do is, is publish stuff that's in progress. So give me a, an hour or so, and I'll get a version of this either on the wiki or on GitHub, one way or the other. Okay. And I, I don't know if this URL uh, is, is publicly available. I don't know if you have to be authenticated to see that or if you have to, I don't, I don't know. But I, I will make it available. I'll make the data available anyway. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, any any further discussion on this before we move on to the next topic?
right. So um, I, I re-added the, the inclusive naming proposal um, to this. I wasn't sure whether or not the DCI working group had met the day after we last talked um, and what the update or status of that was. So I did include it for us to get um, more information to see see the outcome and see where we're at with this particular one. So uh, Grace, if you uh, wouldn't mind just giving us an update on this. Grace didn't know she was gonna be called on. So she might be looking for her mute button. Or she might not be able to come off mute. Um, Peter, were you at the call, the D DCI working group call? I was not at the last one. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I was at the last uh, DCI work group call. Okay. Did you guys make any progress on this particular? proposal uh, from the discussion that we had in the last DSE or? Not specifically on that one. We were talking about forming task forces within the DCI work group, but uh, we haven't yet gotten to the proposal itself. The only announcement that I had as an update is that uh, the same one that I gave, I think a couple of weeks ago, maybe that I have finished the guide for the DCI Lint tool, so that there's now a step-by-step -step screencast type of deal where people can uh, configure it on their project in pretty much just a few clicks. So we will include a link to that in the proposal as well. And that, but that was my update on it. Okay. So uh, it sounds like we haven't moved in from the discussion that we had last week on this particular item. Um, so if that's the case, I guess that was the end of the agenda, was it not? Um, is there anything else that anybody would like to, to talk about or cover? So at the risk of sounding a bit obsessed with security now, um, I just wanted to raise attention uh, to another tool or another project that's uh, being led by the uh, OSSF. And uh, it's called Scorecard. And they basically have, are working on developing a tool that allows, that, that provides a, a way to scan uh, repositories and with a whole bunch of different heuristics, they are trying to assess the level of, I mean, the risk, uh, you know, um, for vulnerabilities into a repo. And um, it's an interesting tool that is very much in the works, but uh, I encourage people to have a look and uh, try it out against their repo. I started doing that and I actually found a bug completely unrelated, but it was interesting nevertheless. Uh, we, had a, we had a shell script that had a, a syntax error in it and, and that the program found out. Uh, but uh, it's not really designed for this. It just, it just you know, showed up in the report. And uh, in any case, I think this is the kind of tool that we will be called to use more and more to again, improve the security overall of open source uh, projects. And so I encourage people to have a look. It's called Scorecard. It's a small program. There are different, uh, it comes in different forms. Uh, it's a Go project, Go Lang. So you can just grab the, the source code and compile it, but also there are different binaries available. It comes as a Docker container. And it's a pretty simple uh, setup. It just basically, you can run it locally in the machine, just give it the uh, 
URL of the GitHub repo, and it will just spit out a, pro, a, a report fairly quickly. And it's again, you know, it's it's by no means perfect. Nobody claims that it is, but they are working on trying to improve it over time. And it's better than nothing. And they felt like, well, we've got to start somewhere, so let's do it. So, all right, maybe maybe so add a link to. Uh, yeah, maybe add a link to the TSC chat on that particular sure um, tool so that people can take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll happy. I'll be happy to do that. All right, thanks. And then was that Artem that was going to speak? Yeah, I was just curious uh, which language does this uh, tool support. So it's only for is it only for the Golang or it could be anything? No, 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 no. So they they are trying to cover as many languages as possible. Uh, it does uh, uh, things like Python and then Java and C++. And, it, and again, I mean, it's very much work in progress. So they are adding as we speak, right? More and more for all sorts of things. Uh, I'll, put the, I'll put the link to the project in the TSC chat and you can start looking at it and get a sense of what it does. Okay, great. And it gives a score. That's interesting. It's not just black and uh, or you know, yeah or nay. It it actually tries to give a score with regard to different types types of tests that they ran, and so it gives you a level of you know uh, confidence with regard to how good or bad you are doing. And I I I'll be honest and transparent when I ran it against. The fabric uh, project, it gave us a score of less than five over 10. It was four point something, which I'm like, okay, I hope we can improve because that doesn't look too good. <laughs> All right, thanks, Arno. Um, yeah, and then one thing that I thought about was the, um, not related to security, but just a, an update on the, the task force for the chat. Um, we did have our first meeting yesterday. Uh, it was quite uh, quite a good meeting where we talked about kind of requirements that people have for a chat system. We talked about things that we think are currently missing from our, our chat system. We talked about things that are good with our chat system. Um, so I encourage anyone who has some thoughts on you know things they like about what we currently have, things they don't like about what we currently have with Rocket Chat. To, to let the task force know. Um, there is a wiki page that has been created to, to start to capture that information. Um, but you know, if there's if there's the opportunity that you have to to be, to discuss this with other people in the community and, and get their feedback as well, um, please do that. I think that the task force is going to try and come to some of the, the project meetings and, and have a conversation with, with people around what it is that they they like, what it is they don't like. So um, thanks, Rai, for bringing the, the wiki page up. Um, this is the wiki page that uh, is kind of the start of the discussion. Uh, we really focused in uh, not on question zero, but really on question nine uh, with the, the requirements um, that, that we think should exist and kind of who the audiences are for the, the different sorts of um, people who come to, to the chat. Uh, so again, if you have any thoughts or would like to add to this this task force, we are meeting again two weeks from yesterday. Um, so two weeks from uh, Wednesday, which I don't know what the date is, sometime in December, I believe. So um, feel free to check that out. Uh, I think the invite went out to the TSE mailing list, so there should be a... Uh, um, a link that you can come to and, and join that particular task force. Uh, anything else that anybody would like to bring up or discuss before I let you have some time left? A very quiet group today. All right, well, if there are no other comments, uh, then I will let you go. Um, for those in the US, 
uh, enjoy the holiday next week. Um, and for everyone, we will see you in two weeks. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.